there are many legends surrounding the world of sprint car racing, but the one with the fiercest reputation has a deceptively mellow-sounding name, Eldora. But as the men who have challenged this half mile over the years, and they'll tell you, there is nothing gentle about this ornery Ohio Oval. Tonight on TNN, the Penzo World of Outlaws go gunning for Eldora's elusive glory in the appropriately named Eldora Clash. a bountiful harvest of corn and soybeans for the farmers of southwestern Ohio. But right in the middle of all this ag serenity lies legendary Eldora Speedway. Here, they farm fans. And a bumper crop is on hand for tonight's Eldora Clash live on TNN Sports. This year, we've been fortunate to visit some brand new state-of-the-art tracks. And as great as they are, they'll never replace tracks with the kind of history that Eldora enjoys. Now, this is the second night of a two-day show. So why not let's go back and look at last night's preliminary A feature. And it was interesting in a lot of ways. Now, the fans in the stands at Better Bob or two had the farm on Sammy Swindell, the number one car in the blue channel lock machine. He had crushed him in the heat, crushed him in the channel lock dash. He was going to win this 25-lap affair. Or was he? The number 20 car of Johnny Herrera shot out into the lead and was extending it. Sammy fighting for second. All of a sudden, looked to his left and, hello, it's the wild child, the 22 car of Jack Howdchild. Howdchild also put Sammy behind him. Now, so I mean, Sammy running third when he was very confident he might win this thing. Right in the middle of the preliminary feature, disaster for the 5M Mopar car. Mark Tenzer with motor problems. He ultimately would finish in the 23rd spot. A minor little point speeding there. But still, it was the 20 car and the 22 car. Herrera and Hod, Herrera and Hod. Lap after lap. It was just a terrific A feature and some big surprises. And also, Joey Saldana, how about him? He slid in the fourth place behind Sammy Swindell. Right now, let's go down to the pits with a man of the moment last night, and that is the associate editor of Open Wheel Magazine, Dave Argebright. Yes, indeed, Steve. The 20 car of Johnny Herrera was impressive last night. Johnny, how do you use last night's win? How do you carry that momentum into tonight? Well, you know, it's, it's another night. It's a new night. But uh, yeah, I tell you, if we can just pick up where we left off and uh, try to keep up with the racetrack, how it's going to change throughout the night, you know, we're not going to get as many laps we got on it last night. So, uh, you know, we get to run the dash there and just trying to watch the racetrack and watch the other heat races and the other races throughout the night and uh, keep up with it. He feels very confident for tonight. Bobby Gerald. Well, for Mark Kinzer at the Eldora Speedway, it's been sweet and sour throughout his career. Three feature wins have been the good side, but on the bad side, you've had some accidents here. You've had uh, different things going on with the motor and a fluky deal last night. What happened? Well, it was strange. Last night, we picked up a piece of debris that actually uh, shredded off our, our radiator and, and uh, it pinched an oil line, and then which in turn starved the motor for oil and the motor blew up. And in a deal like that, obviously nothing you can do. How does that set you back now for tonight's action? Well, I think we might have been able to crack the top four last night and now tonight we didn't qualify very good poorly actually at best and we're 21st so we got our work cut out for us tonight. Mark Kinzer is going to have to have his elbows up Steve Evans. He is indeed. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our show live on TNN Sports. I am Steve Evans. As always, this is Brad Doty, and you more than anyone could tell us, anytime you come to Eldora, I don't care how many years of experience you've got, it's a gut check. It really is. The experience at this place is, is key, too, and the guys with the experience usually do the best, but it's intimidating to even some of the top World of Outlaw teams, some of these drivers that come here usually don't run too well, so... Uh, it's a, it is a real gut check, Steve. Let's have a look at the format for tonight's races. First of all, there's going to be four heats. There'll be eight laps each, and the top four will transfer to the A main. Those are the heat races. Then there's two channel lock dashes. Each are eight laps, or eight cars, or eight laps, or eight cars. Then there's a B feature. That's 12 laps, 16 cars. The top four go to the A, which will be a huge 30 laps, and 24 cars. And don't forget that we're also going to be here tomorrow night with a huge... Kings Royal for $50,000 to win. Same time, same station. Be sure to join us. <laughs> right now, let's show you the top 10 in Outlaw points as of right this second. In the number 10 spot is Jack Houdenschild. Just one win. That's kind of a surprise. In number 9, he was helped a bit last night as Johnny Herrera has one win the first race of the year and has been sliding backwards, actually. Joey Saldana, 33 starts, zero wins. Some consistency, though, has him in eight. 
Then there's Andy Hillenberg, 33 starts as well. Two wins, one preliminary feature. He's in the seventh spot. Dale Blaney got his first win a few weeks ago of his career in the world of outlaws. He's in the sixth spot. Danny Lasowski, we thought maybe he was going to rule the season with a great start. Eight feature wins, a lack of consistency, though. In the fourth spot is Stevie Smith with four feature wins, one preliminary, and he handled it on to that fourth spot. Sammy Swindell, there again, he should be higher up. He's got four feature wins. He's still number three, was number two until last weekend when Mark Kenzer actually Monday night in Wisconsin won the race and pushed Sammy back to three. On top, the king of the outlaws, Steve Kenzer. Stay with us. We're coming back with the heat races from Eldora. And by Luxair, the official heating and air conditioning supplier to the world of outlaws. We're back, everybody. It's a beautiful late afternoon, early evening for sprint car racing here at beautiful Eldora Speedway. And you're watching them hot lap out there for heat number one. As we said just before we went away to break, there are eight cars for eight laps, and the top four go to the A feature. Then you've got to get to that A feature. You don't want to go through the B. Here's our Mopar grid for you. Phil Cressman, that's a new name to me. How about you, Brad? Uh, he's cut his teeth here in Eldor with the 360s and things, moved into 410s this year. Good racer. Alongside the always top Stevie Smith. Brooke Tatnell, the Aussie in row number two with Donnie Schatz, the 15 car from Minot, South Dakota, North Dakota, wherever that is. Row three, Tim Coon. Mark Kenzer said he was in tough, and he's not kidding. Look at that. There's the five M cars. Shane Stewart, Rodney Duncan, Brian Carlson, and Rocky Hodges. Talk about veterans. Rocky Hodges, he'll get a big cheer from this crowd. He put on a lot of thrilling shows here over the years. And there's our official flagman for tonight's Eldora Clash. <laughs> He's only going to use one flag. That's all these guys want to see. Is Let's that go down to Bobby flag? Gerald. Uh, you got something on Donnie Schatz? Well, Donnie Schatz has been starting to crack out of it here, guys. We have well documented his struggles early in the season, but now five consecutive top tens, and he is coming on, trying to break into the top ten in point standings right now in 11th, looking on the outside, looking in. And uh, we'll see how he attacks the Eldora Speedway here tonight. We will indeed. He didn't get a real uh, welcome mat from the owner of Eldora, El Earl Baltus, because at Bristol, you may recall, he said in an interview, just teasing, he said, boy, Bristol makes... Eldora looked kind of wussy. Yeah. And I thought at the time, I said at the time, yeah. oh, you're going to pay for that boy, has he ever. Yeah, but, I, you know, he wasn't putting Eldora down. He was just saying that everybody's intimidated about Eldora and then to go to those speeds at Bristol. And he, he, if he had it to do over again, I think he'd use some different words. Oh, baby. <laughs> this track doesn't really have a lot of clay in it. It's mostly just dirt, kind of like topsoil, really. Well, and they go out. They just went out and watered again after qualifying. And, and it's uh, these guys have to guess a little bit on how long it's going to stay sticky. Phil Cressman on the pole. That's the number nine car. Alongside him with far more experience is Stevie Smith, the 19 car. Stevie Smith, the coilover car built by he and his father. They build their own engines, everything. Races out in front. They're going to bring this, bring this one back, Steve. The yellow's yep. out. Yep. It's sure. See what, interesting to see what happened here. It looked like they Stevie Smith was on the outside, got a little bit of a run, which come down off that banking, the guy on the outside usually has the advantage. Stevie's dad, Steve, he also wondering exactly what's going to happen. And most of the drivers have told me, Brett, they prefer to start from the outside here at Eldora, not on the pole. Right. Well, again, because you're coming down off that steep banking, you actually have a little bit of a run. And look at that. They're going to put Stevie Smith back. They feel he jumped the start and took off before they got to the white line. Just putting back one row. New format this year. These guys, they don't get a warning. If they're not side by side, whoever they think uh, it was at fault, they put them back one row. And these cars are racing heads up based on their time trials earlier. No inversion. Well, as you said, the top four go, but it's critical to win this, these heat races to get into one of the dashes. What a break this was for Donnie Schatz, the yellow 15 car. Absolutely, he went from the second row to the outside front row again where you want to start. He got the jump. Here comes Stevie down on the inside, little slide down there to perfection. Pushes the nine car of Phil Pressman back into third. Boy, you bet right now Stevie Smith is hot under that helmet. He wants to get up there now right now. He's hoping for a yellow. Put him on the bumper of Donnie Schatz. At this point, that'd be his only, only chance to, to get by him. And what he would have to do then is to try the Eldora slide job. And right now on the bump, remember we told you the top four cars, that would be Brooke Tatnell from New South Wales, Australia. Look at that, Mark Kenzer back in fifth. Mark Kenzer has to move up one more spot with that 5M car. He's going to find himself in the B feature. Yep, right there. there. Is. So not only does Stevie Smith wish for yellow, so does Mark Kenzer right now to hope have any chance at advancing and getting into the A main directly. Right now, Brooke Tatnell, the sixth car, has that spot and is tenaciously hanging on to it. I talked about it at the opener, Steve, that a 
about experience, and Brooke Tattle doesn't have a lot of experience at Eldor, and he's doing a great job right now. This would be the first time this year Martin's gone to the B because of problems with the uh, mechanical problems primarily, and there are leaders, Donnie Shots. I love this track, girl. I love this track. <laughs> Stevie Smith just about tagged the wall right there. Currently running second in that 19 car. Using every bit of that racetrack. Boy, that just shows it there. He came off the corner a little bit high. Got the right rear up in that dust just a little bit up there. That loose stuff. And boy, he just about smacked the wall. Harry stayed really far away from it. White flag, last lap. We don't have dust at Eldora, Brad. Some loose dirt flying up there. That's right. It's heavy fog. Here is Donnie Schatz, your leader. He got a little bit of a bump when Stevie Smith was set back that gave Donnie a bit of an advantage, but who's to say he wouldn't done it anyway? And as you say, elbows up. <laughs> Mark Kenzer did get the four spot. What a relief that's gonna be. Yeah, Brooke Tatton on the six car broke. He's coasting down the front straightaway right now and uh, don't know what happened to him, but what a break for Mark Kenzer. Mark Kenzer, who, as I said, there's your winner of this heat. That's Donnie Shot. Mark Kenzer last Saturday been pushed back into third by Sammy Swindell when he won up in North Dakota. And Monday night, he won for Sammy back to third. There's your results. Uh, Rodney Duncan is not going to go directly to the A feature. Yeah, they had uh, that Atkins on their fourth. Mark Kins are actually finished fourth. Yeah, absolutely. And there's Donnie Schatz. That's a nice way to start the evening, isn't it? Sure is. You know, coming up Sunday on TNN, the ASA drivers make their first visit to Chicago Motor Speedway. Won't that be fun? It should be quite a challenge for these teams that have never even seen this track. It's a new one-mile track that is shaped kind of like a paperclip with long straights and tight turns. Don't miss the USA Meets.com 200, Sunday at 3 Eastern and Pacific, right here on TNN. And that's where our buddy Ralph Shaheen is. He'll rejoin us in the booth for the Knoxville Nationals coming up soon. As we said, a nice crowd on hand, and they're still coming in. And as we still have three heat races to go out of the four, followed by the a little plum and corner town, as my dad would say. Turn the corner, and you're plum out of town. And you're right, heaven is the TNN World of Outlaws at Eldor. Let's go to Bobby, the winner of heat number one. Well, here's our first heat race winner, Donnie Schatz. Donnie, how's that racetrack? Pretty good, you know, they put a little water on there. Uh, things pretty quick right now. I think it's still going to blow away. Sun's still out, but... Uh, Got the Parker store car running pretty good there. It struggled a little bit last night, but uh, Frankie Kurt come over and give me a little help and uh, seem a little better. The retired Frankie Kurt just over the shoulder. Now, let me ask you this, Donnie, real quick here. Uh, you and Earl Baltus had a little uh, misunderstanding about your words about this racetrack. You have respect for this track, I know. Oh, definitely. Uh, this is one of the awesomest racetracks I've ever been at. Uh, you know, I, just, uh, I guess he misunderstood me a little bit, but, uh, you know, I did a uh, bad deal, I guess. Just having some fun, Steve. Grovel, kid. Grovel if you have to. <laughs> Heat number two, and here is the Bopar grid. And interesting, uh, the king will be on the outside of the uh, front row, exactly where he likes to be. That is the place to start, as we mentioned before. Nobody, not, nobody probably has any more experience than Steve Kidd. Kenny Jacobs does have the pole honors. Andy Hillebert, Brad Fur in row number two. Jason Myers and Jeff, the Jack Shepard. That's his nose nickname. Picked up a 12th, as a matter of fact. Yeah. 6 e Keith Crabtree, Kent Walters, and Raymond Shank round out the top eight. Yeah, Kenny Jacobs on the front row is no slouch here. He's Whoa. won the big one in the Kings Royal, too. He's He gets his gets around here really well. So uh, Steve will have his hands full. There's a good look at the number 12 car. That is Tyler Walker of Southern California fame. Yep, car out of Pennsylvania. They towed all the way over here. Fans love to see Tyler win, even a heat race, because he'll do backflips. He's the Mary Lou Retton of the Pizzo World of Outlaws. Hi, y'all. Good to see you. Dave Argabride, what you got, bud? Well, the Tyler Walker entry is kind of interesting. The Apple car is very familiar to people in Pennsylvania. So run there weekly. They've got a California guy coming east to race with a Pennsylvania car going west, so quite a team in that 12 car. You can get on Tyler to put on a show, that's for sure. Tyler will stand on the gas, and uh, he, he rings every every ounce out of a race car that there is. <laughs> so Steve Kenzer got to be a, well, a pretty good favorite here. Kenny Jacobs certainly knows lots, as you pointed out. But again, Steve probably has the advantage on the outside. And the important thing here is to be in the top four, not yep. necessarily even win it. We've seen the King 
under previous formats go out there and hunt around intentionally, even finish fourth just to yeah. try different lines on the racetrack. But I don't think that's the case tonight. You need to go out and get every checker flag you can get. Yeah, what Kenny will have to be hope is maybe they missed on the fuel setup just a little bit to where Steve's engine stumbles when he smashes the throttle. That, that That's what you hope for at this point to, uh, to get a better run on him off the start. Unlike last Saturday night, up in Fargo, North Dakota, where the hu humidity was just stifling to the point that was actually confusing the tune-ups and crew were hurting engines. Yep, it was like 100%, and the, the engine just couldn't breathe, and it was hurting engines, but not the case here tonight, I don't think. And, but these guys, they struggle with that every night. They're professionals, and they, they usually get it pretty pretty close. And for tomorrow night, the Kings World temperatures in the high to mid-70s. That will be a little bit of heaven. Here we come. Looks like a good, clean start. Kenny Jenkins on the gas first. The red 6K car. And Kenny did exactly what he had to do. He went into one and slid up in front of Steve and took the line away. Steve Kenzer defenseless there. Kenny had just enough run on him, Steve, going into one, and it was his racetrack, and he moved up there and took the line, and Steve could not go around him on the outside. Top four, Kenny Jacobs, Steve Kenzer, Brad Fur, the 2F car, and Andy Hillenberg. That looks like that's for third and fourth right there with Shepard in fifth. He's the guy back there in the bubble. Looks like he's catching Andy out of turn two. Tyler Walker not able to make much steam. Let's go back to the sixth spot. And here's Jeff Shepard coming in. Boy, Shepard looks really good at this point. Shepard. Oh, and he about gets the back of Andy and he had to check up. Boy, that's when you get out of the throttle here, you lose so much momentum, yep. Steve. It's going to take him a lap or two to get back up there. And Jeff Shepard has been doing such a great job. I think he's two in points in the Pennzoil Gum Out series, the kind of a triple A ball for the World Bell Loss Support Series. We're on lap number four. some problems with the Kenzer car. We saw it in turn number one. Now we see it over turn number three coming into four. Is it going to have enough to go one more lap? Two more laps, actually. Well, again, if that's just an oil leak, which it looks like it might be, they, they, it, these cars hold eight to ten quarts of oil, and a little bit of oil makes a lot of smoke, so he might be able to hold on with this. And you really only see the smoke when the car is under heavy load in the corners. This is wife Dana going, oh, no, Steve. Again, if it's just a leak, it's not a problem, but if it's something internally in the engine forcing that oil out, well, then he could have a problem, but it, it usually blows up by now if it's something internal. Well, Kenny Jacobs has no problems as he runs up front and wins heat number two here at Eldora. Jacobs, Kenzer, Fur, and Andy Hillenberg. As we look at it officially, Tyler Walker will have to run the B, as will Jeff Shepard, which will make for a great B feature as will Kent Walters and Keith Crabtree and Raymond Shank. If you think things can get rough here, check out TNN Sunday night. That's when you'll see a ton of fury unleashed and the rider can only use one hand. It's championship bull riding from Bakersfield, California, Sunday night at 9 Eastern and Pacific, right here on TNN. The wing sprint cars have often been compared to uh, as the bulls of motorsports. Stay with us. A lot of work going on the 11 Quaker State car back in the pits. And then some smoke coming out in heat number two. We'll be back with more with millions of brand name auto parts and accessories to choose from. It's easy to prove you're a wrenchhead. Are you a wrenchhead? Wrenchhead.com. Parts online all the time. Down to Dave Argabright. Well, we heard some funny noises as that red six circled the track those last few laps. Kenny, what's the problem with the engine? I'm not really sure. Uh, I think it's electrical. Uh, we've had zero engine problems all year. The Kreiner engines have just been awesome. Um, I think it's electrical because it, it was making funny noises and it slowed way down, but um, it stayed the same then. It, it did it on about the second or third lap and it stayed even just slow, but it didn't die any worse. So I don't think it's internal. Well, it's a good way to start the night, though, with this heat wind. Can you build from that? I think so. We're going to start sixth in the dash. I think we have an awful fast car. The Eagle Eagle uh, tire, uh, Eagle race car is awful fast. And um, I think the Goodyear tires are real good tonight, and I think we'll be right there. Steve Evans, back to you. Well, Brad, you analyze that. Well, when he's talking electrical, these cars run a magneto system, no battery or anything, but they've messed with timing and things on these magnetos to retard the timing as they get up to speed. Playing with some of that, some of that, some of those things that trick stuff goes wrong, and they might have a little problem there with the magneto. 
Well, you thought the graphic, this is the lineup for heat number three. Darren Pitton, Dale Blaney in the number 93 Anico card. Danny Lasowski, the Beef Packers card, number 83. Dean Jacobs, 8-H. Kevin Huntley, 92. Craig Delansky, what a show he put on last Saturday night in Fargo, North Dakota. Should have won it. Greg Hodnett, Danny Wood, going for the Rookie of the Year honors. Jonathan Stevens, Bob Bennett. Huh, the three tons of joy. Courtesy of TNN. Greg Hodnett will be carrying our onboard camera tonight in heat number three. And that's a car that Jimmy Vassar and his dad are involved in. The 12V car. Ooh, two of them. Same car, front and rear views. And he'll give it a ride. Bet that's, on that. What you see there, that chrome bar, that's the push bar that the uh, push truck pushes against to fire these race cars off. We were talking about what a great, great run. First of all, let's go down to Bobby Gerald for a comment. Bobby? Let's talk to you about Craig Delansky real quick. An anxious uh, night already for the number seven team. Scott Bennick uh, joining that crew now. But they had to change a motor after qualifying. It just wasn't up to snuff. Craig didn't qualify well. He's starting outside of the third row in the number six position. This is the Gum Out Series points leader who, uh, as Steve talked about, dazzled us at Fargo just last week before suffering a flat tire in a race that he should have won. Yeah, he also, the Gum Out Series there the other night, uh, you know, lap, lap traffic leading the race and got into a lap car and took himself out. So a couple tough nights for Craig. But big trash going on in the Quaker State number 11 camp. Looks like they're working on the differential. Well, that's just changing gears right there. It's about a, about a five minute job to pull those, that cover off and slip a couple gears in there. Okay, here's the start of heat number three on the pole. Darren Pittman opposite him, the 93 car of Dale Blaney. Blaney slides into second behind the blue machine of Pittman. I think really deserved a break after what happened in Fargo. He was clearly leading Sammy Swindell. He uh, was running at a power of strength and he didn't wear out a tire. He punctured one. A piece of debris got inside the tire. And there's the uh, top five. Good news for the first four. Bad news for Greg Hodden in the 12V car. Not totally bad. He'll go to the B and have a shot at tagging the A. So with three heats down and just one to go, We'll be right back live on TNN Sports for more of the Pennzoil World of Outlaws from Eldora, Ohio. Bang in action at Eldora, the Pennzoil World of Outlaws in the Eldora Clash to be followed tomorrow night by Kings Royal. Same time, same station. There's our helicopter platform cam from the Pennzoil World of Outlaws. You can see all the 
trucks and trailers, the uh, hauling rigs in the inner, in the center of this giant oval. It's really a big half mile. Earl calls it the fastest half mile in the world, and I wouldn't disagree with him. And you can see the cars circling around out there right now are warming up for heat number four, the Circuit City Aerial Platform. Bobby Gerald. Well, the winner of heat number three was Darren Pittman, who last year led 12 laps of the Kings Royal, which we'll get to see tomorrow night. But Darren, what is it about this racetrack that brings out the best in you? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's the TV. Uh, maybe it's the big money. I tell you what, we, we need to pick up a sponsor, so uh, we got to step up the program when it comes to these TV races, and, and uh, especially anytime we have a chance to win $50,000. But I got to thank Lanny and Beverly Edwards with Chili Bowl and uh, uh, Devil's Bowl Speedway, along with uh, Emma and Fuzzy Hawn. Uh, they really helped us out a lot and, uh, and helped us keep us at some of these TV shows. And Steve Evans, you've said it before. Darren Pittman, the whole package. Absolutely. There is a winner just looking for a circle to celebrate in. Here is heat number four, the final of our heat races. Then we move into the dashes. Paul McMahon, in, uh, transplanted California, now in Indiana. Brian Paulus, a tough youngster. Bruce Ellenberger in row number two. Jim Neer, Chad Timidan. A lot of these are local guys. Tim Schaefer, always a threat in the 11-H guard. Over here at the Eldora Clash, the Penzo World of Outlaws series, which means crews that transfer directly in the eight are frantically getting their machines ready for the channel lock dashes that decide their positioning in that eight feature. Let's go down to Dave Argerett with the winner of heat number four. Well, Paul, you're just saying the track's nice right now, but tricky. How so? Oh, you got the sun going down here in turn four, and uh, entering turn three, it's a fine line to be on the cushion, and, and, and the sun's right there, and it kind of blinds you once you get in, and uh, so you're kind of going through that little blind, and, and you're so fast, and you're so close to the wall, you don't want to make a mistake and hit it, uh, but, you know, the United Express line, Eagle, was running real good tonight, and uh, puts us in the second dash, so hopefully we can get a good run tonight. Is the track, uh, can you see it begin to change now that the sun's off of it? Well, I don't know, because Earl keeps watering this thing, and uh, but, I mean, it's slick. It's going to stay slick all night long. Uh, he, he keeps watering. It's going to just knock the dust down for a little bit, and uh, hopefully we'll put a good, on, a good show for the fans tonight. Steve Evans, he's happy with that heat race win. Oh, he is, and Earl is famous for loving to drive that water <laughs> truck. And, you know, every major sport has nicknames for its players or its athletes, football, basketball, baseball, and also so does the Pennzoil World of Outlaws. The man who christens many of the racers is Johnny Gibson, the voice of the Pennzoil World of Outlaws. Just kind of something that strikes you when you see something happen. Uh, you know, the Brownsburg bullet for Joey Saldana, obviously the way he qualifies, that's uh, what led to that nickname. Um, the crowd pleaser, Craig Delansky. If you've seen him run the high side of the speedway at Knoxville and put the right rear right up against the wall coming out of turn two and pass a car where you thought no car could fit, that's where the crowd pleaser comes from. I've never had a nickname and they stuck that one with me, so I guess I'll just go with it, Hollywood. I think if I, if I was going to have a nickname, it'd probably be Stewie, uh, just due to my last name, Stewart. So other than that, I don't, I probably couldn't say my other nicknames on the air. When I was a kid, they used to call me Mama's Boy. Um, love my mama. I've been called a lot of stuff, but I've never had a nickname, no. <laughs> nicknames usually aren't very conservative, so so they don't really fit for some reason for me. But uh, but now my my wife calls me Greg or Honey, one of those two. Okay. But that's it. <laughs> my crew a couple years ago uh, they named me the Rim Rider because I like to drive on the high side of the racetrack, and we won a lot of races that way uh, that year. But it's still sticking here with me. I, I do tend to run the top more than the bottom. The wild child's fine with me. Uh, you know, anything that helps sell apparel uh, works, so uh, that's fine with me. Slim's about it, I think. Uh, that kind of fits my description pretty good, I guess. So uh, I guess that's what you call me. Squirt's kind of what stuck with me the most. Mr. Excitement was around when I ran California, but uh, that's kind of Jimmy Spencer's thing, and we know all about him. Third race they ever raced in. Um, I was leading the feature race and caught on fire. It threw a rod out the side, so I ended up with the nickname Fireball, and uh, it sort of stuck for a few years. But uh, Australians have a tendency to follow the American line, and then we ended up. I'm from San Susie, so I ended up with the San Susie Super Shoe. The Hurry and Hoosier and the King. That's about it. That's uh, that's uh, the only two nicknames I've ever had. I guess if, if I had one, it would probably have to be Woody. That's what my dad, when he was still alive, that's what they called him. So I kind of like that name. I don't know if it's a jet or, or what it is anymore. I, I have, I've been called so many names over the years, I don't know which, I don't know which is stuck more. But uh, lately, sometimes some people call me that, and uh, some people just don't even call me, so I don't know. <laughs> 
got it the day I was born. My great grandfather, uh, he went in there and got me when he wasn't supposed to, and started carrying me down the hall and said, "This is my little dude, and stay away." And that's it's stuck forever. You know, all the all the good guys there in in Dover, Missouri. Uh, I don't think they know my name's Danny. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a dude, and that's just how it is. <laughs> It doesn't matter, just as long as they call me something, you know, it, uh, you know, if they don't call you, then you're not doing anything. Well, how about you, Doty, when you were out there doing this? Were you bad Brad or <laughs> dangerous Doty? What were you? Well, actually, uh, Terry Ball's Earl's son came up with Mr. Determination, so I guess that was a polite way, polite way of saying stubborn or bullheaded or something. I don't, <laughs> I'm not sure. Right now, let's go down to Bobby Gerald with something a little off the wall. Well, you know, guys, I've been on video game patrol for some time now. Uh, I am anxiously awaiting the rat bag release of Sprint Car Racing on the dirt track, and it's getting a lot closer. Just this week, a big announcement, the Pennzoil World of Outlaws and Rat Bag coming together for an unprecedented licensing agreement with the top 10 drivers in the World of Outlaws point standings. And uh, J.D. Kramer, who has been behind it, uh, as we get a look at this game right now, it's totally cool, puts you in the driver's seat, lets you get down there on the low groove, the high groove, bunch of different racetracks. But, J.D., big news in signing up all these drivers. Drivers, uh, the likeness of the teams will be on the game now. Yeah, it's actually a three-year agreement that Ratbag, TNN, and the Pennzoil World of Outlaws have come to. And uh, what it basically means is we now have the endorsement of the World of Outlaws on this game. Uh, it's going to be the first sprint car game to market, and it's also going to be the only one where you can go in and race as a Steve Kinzer or a Mark Kinzer and, you know, the top ten outlaw guys. And what makes it exciting for the drivers now is some bonus money being put up by Ratbag and the Pennzoil World of Outlaws series. And we're talking about uh, a considerable amount of money for our TV show. Yeah, we've got $300,000 laid out on the line for the TV shows only in the next three years. So uh, this basically means that a guy that's running ninth in the World of Outlaw point standings, if he has the best average finish in the TV races only, he can walk away with the majority of the cash from this. And that, uh, that opens it up for some of the younger guys and, uh, you know, gives everybody a chance to get in and get, get a part of the Ratbag Games Cup, as we're calling it. And these guys, they love the game. Mike's down here uh, getting a look at everything. What do you think, guys? You all love this video game, sprint car game? You're all going to be buying it? Yeah. <laughs> right on, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> look, just like Brian Paula, some of that video. And a lot of fans having a good time. I'm sure most of them want to get into the rat bag video game. And a big engine change going on in the Greg Hodnett pit. You know what? They can change an engine in just about 15 minutes, and I think they're just going to make it. We'll be back with the first Channel Lock Dash right after this. Parts for Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, and Jeep vehicles from the dealerships that sell and install them. From the helicopter platform cam is the Shadows Lincoln Herald Eldora Speedway near Rossburg, Ohio. The cars you see out on the racetrack. Aha, uh -huh. some you haven't seen yet tonight because they were in the top four last night. This is the first of the Channel Lock Dash. So here is the starting lineup for Dash Numero Uno. Well, actually, Steve, these are the cars that were in the heat races and finished second and third in this first dash, so they have been out tonight. The second dash has the cars from last night. And yeah, Stevie yeah. Smith on row number one. He was second in his heat tonight alongside him. Steve Kinzer was also second in his heat. Dale Blaney, second in his heat, sounding redundant. Tim Schaefer, the 11-H car, he was also second in his heat. Paul Cressman was third in his heat. And Dave Argerbright, you got something on Phil Cressman? That's right, Steve. 32 years old, highly regarded from Clyde, Ohio. A lot of people say he's an up-and-coming area driver. And guess what? Today's his birthday, 32 years old today. He says he's already having a pretty happy birthday. I'll bet he is. He's in the Channel Lock Dash. How about you, Bobby Gerald, on 2F Brad Fur? Well, the Californian Brad Fur doesn't get to see big racetracks too much coming from California. Only his fourth time here at Eldora, but it's the first time he's ever qualified for the AMA, and he's fired up. And so, too, is Danny Lasowski. had a decent outing here last night. He was third in his heat today. And Ed Lynch alongside in the 2L car. And that wraps up the grid for dash number one, channel lock dash number one. Who do you like here, Brett? Well, again, uh, you know, Steve Kinzer on the outside. Look at him going up to the top there, trying to get a run down that banking. Good news. There was no engine change in the Quaker State number 11 car that worked only on the rear end of the automobile. It was just a simple oil leak. Well, that was twice I was wrong. Kenny Jacobs got the jump on him off the bottom. I got the jump on Steve Kinzer, and so did Stevie Smith. Is this they're gonna, coming back? Well, they're going to bring this one back. It has been a very dramatic day for Steve Kinzer. Let's take a look at some of the lowlights, actually, for the King. There's a rather determined expression, if I've ever seen one. This was in heat number two. Some smoke coming out of the engine there. Again, it looked like an oil leak at that point. There they're working on the rear end. 
That's just a gear change from what it looks like there. And here they are alongside Stevie Smith as we look for a restart. That's the front row. Steve Kins are over 400 feature wins. Stevie Smith hoping someday to boost of those numbers. He's got three already this year. The Eggersall ran car on the ball. Steve Kins on the outside, the Granger State machine. Ooh, Stevie gets a much better start this time. The black car. Black 19. Oh, look at this. Brad Fur going under. Slide job slip clear across the racetrack. Yeah, that now, made Blaney this. mad. Blaney's going to do the same thing in return. Yep. Got to run on him. That's the Eldora slide job right there when a guy <laughs> is basically top tapping you on the back bumper, entering the corner, and just dives under you, slides up in front of you, takes your line. That's the slide job. Yep, Stevie Smith up front, Steve Kitts right behind him, then Steve Schaefer, Dale Blaney. All these cars we know for sure are going to the eight features. Just how will they line up when they get there? Boy, that is right against the wall out of turn two there. We've seen a lot of guys, and I've said it before, that's where the trouble usually is. They bang that wall a little bit coming out of turn two. Yeah, we saw a nice shot of Danny Lasotsky there. He's uh, back away. Six spot. Got him right there. You can see a good, that brown moisture, that dirt up on the top. That's where they're trying to get that right rear up there. Get a hold of that little bit of moisture. And traditionally, Danny likes to ride the pole. He likes to get down low, but you can't do that here tonight. Not right now, anyway. Yeah, you can't do that at Eldora. The Tim Schaefer and Dale Blaney battling now. Yep, that Schaefer in the yellow 11H car, the vibrant car. Blaney in the Amico. Machine number 93. Both these guys from run the Western Pennsylvania area. Tim from Western Pennsylvania. Of course, Blaney from Northeastern Ohio. So they've done a lot of racing through the years. Really good friends. The leaders are on lap number five right now. How about Stevie Smith? He looking good tonight, really good. Yeah. That's that coilover car we talked about before. I believe it's the only one out here. Coilover shots instead of bars. Yep. Shot there showed his headers as we got the white flag. Yep. They put they put 90 degree elbows on their headers. Most guys dump the headers right in front of the rear tire. Stevie lost the race, Port of Allo race earlier in the year. Thought maybe the headers got the tires too hot, so they put elbows on for this weekend. Good thinking. So we're on the final lap. Stevie Smith has taken the checkered flag. Steve Kenzer hangs up for second. 11H, Tim Schaefer, good job. Dale Blaney in that four slot. There's the 19 car. That's the winner of Channel Lock Dash number one. Eight quick laps. His best lap time was 14.76 seconds, and that's uh, quite off of the track record, I can tell you that. There's a the rundown. Against Stevie Smith, those elbows, it sounded like a, out here qualifying, it sounded like a, a Winston Cup stock car with those elbows on it. it. It had a deeper throaty sound than the rest of the guys. It really did. And the cars for Channel Lock Dash number two are just about ready to push off. You know, if you're looking for action, and who isn't, on Wednesday nights, well, you come to the right place. There's Magnificent Seven, 18 Wheels of Justice, and Dead Man's Gun. All in one night. Don't miss a whole lot of action every Wednesday starting at 8 Eastern on TNN's Action Wednesday. Love that big 18 figure, 18 wheels of justice. That's so cool. And so are the fans who are joining a beautiful Brad Doty two years ago when you made that one off return in the Coors Light car. That's in that tape. Yes, we are, TNN Motorsports. We are live for the Pennzoil World of Outlaws. And on the track, we have got Channel Lock Dash number two. But first down to Dave Archibald with Stevie Smith. Stevie, looks like a lot of conversation about tires right now. What's the discussion? Well, we're just trying to figure out which Goodyear tire to put on there. The track's really hard, but it's not hurting tires, so I think everybody's guessing. What happened on the heat race earlier? Now the sun was out coming over the corner there, and I lost track of the white line, uh, and I just jumped. I took off too early. You know, a lot of times the officials don't know how bad the sun is. It really fouled me up. Well, he's uh, got a good run in that dash. They're going to try to make it just a little bit better, Steve. Thank you, David. And let's take a look at the grid for Channel Lock Dash numero dos. It will be on the pole, and deservedly so, from last night's preliminary victory, number 20, Johnny Herrera, that black car you see there. Next to him will be Jack Howden Child, who finished second last night. Are you starting to see a pattern developing here? Starting third inside the second row, we've Sammy Swindell, who was third last night. And Joey Saldana, who early this morning was spent about two hours polishing up his Harley Fat Boy with a beautiful bike. He was fourth last night, so he starts fourth in this dash. And they're followed by Donnie Schatz, a 15 car, 6K, Kenny Jake, who's got a good shot here, Darren Pittman, the three car, and Paul McMahon, U2. Dave Argabright again. 
Well, Steve, another car to watch in this dash may be the 17 of Joey Saldana. They're very happy with the setup on that car. The only question before they rolled out is which tire. Now we're going to see in the next few minutes whether they made the right choice or not. Steve? In car camera, Johnny Herrera, one of our ace cameramen, has been since we had the technology in the 20 car. That's the look out of the front. Either that or he's in reverse. We've also got Jack Houtenchild, the 22 car. Up the front, right over the top of the wing, Joy Saldana and the 17 car. So those are in cars here in Channel Lock Dash number two. That one of Hot Chill on the right side there, that ought to be a good one, the way he likes to run the top around this place. Okay, here we go. We're going to ride on board with Joy Saldana for the start of this race, looking back over his left rear. Your great cameraman, Johnny Herrera, leaps up of the lead as he did in the A feature last night. Jack Hatton jumped right behind him, Sam and Trudell, Joey Saldana. That's how they finished the A feature last night. In ex exactly well, that order. Well, Sammy was third, Saldana fourth, but uh, right now Saldana's got a run on Hot Shield going into turn three. Boy, Herrera, and he has got to really be happy with this weekend. He's just driving away from these guys within a lap already. Oh, some smoke off of Saldana there. On board the South Anna car, color 17, the Eagle Fisher engine machine. Some of this smoke, Steve, could be uh, when the track's a little bit drier like this that really twists Whoa. the uh, engines. The RPMs are really high, and it could be some, some damaging some of these engines, possibly valve springs, valves hitting the engine, or the uh, pistons. A little smoke out of Jack Hodgeshield, also in front of South Anna. Yep. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Oh. There was a little of that, too. Hodgeshield on the inside, slow. Now he's got back up to speed coming off the turn two. He went to the bottom trying to fight. He's got a problem. He's just down there trying to stay out of the way and finish. So the yellow is out. Got the YouTube Paul McMahon on the yep. front straightaway here. Doesn't look like he hit anything. And that's going to bunch this field up big time. McMahon was running in eight spot last. Boy, for Saldana and Hodge, will both be blowing a little oil out there like that. There was a little fire out of the Wild Child's car. Yeah, he's blown enough that it got out on the headers and started a little bit of a fire. Okay, Bobby Gerald. Let me talk to you about Kenny Jacobs. When we last left him, he was having motor problems. They first thought it was a magneto, diagnosed it that way and changed the mag. And then they found out after about 15 minutes of changing the mag that it wasn't the mag. They had to go back and, and totally put in another engine. They have done that, and so Kenny's out here for this dash. But the deal is, Kenny tells me that this is his number three engine. Number one engine has already blown up. Number two sitting up in the trailer, getting ready for maybe tomorrow night. So this is the third best one, Steve. Yeah, but he's always got Mighty Mouse, right, Brad? Yeah, that's his, his dad. His dad has named all the all the Jacobs kids, had nicknames for all of them. And Kenny was always pretty little when he was uh, a young boy and got the nickname Mouse. <laughs> Mighty Mouse with a cape and all. Yeah. Well, the more weight and more muscle, I guess, it turned into Mighty Mouse. Huh? <laughs> That's right. I, the rodent on the way. That's all I know for <laughs> sure. All right. Pace car is still pace wagon, pace truck, whatever it is. It's still out there. And we have, we're halfway through exactly pace car. Four laps are down. Johnny Herrera, Jack Hodgson, Joey Saldana, Sammy Swindell, Kenny Jacobs, Darren Pittman, Johnny Schatz, Paul McMahon is out. Let's go down to Dave Argerberg. You think they're throwing a little dirt in the seats there, Dave? They got goggles on, the fans. Man, they're going to throw dirt everywhere here at Eldora. That's the name of the game. The 22 car Jack Hoddenchild has a brand new engine builder this weekend, Steve. HG and Associates out of Limerick, Pennsylvania. Now, they've never built sprint car racing motors before. They're a, 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 a modified uh, engine builder out east with a strong reputation. The Eldon team says, hey, this is the kind of guy we want to give him a try and see if we can bring a new engine builder to sprint car racing. See how they're weekend goes. Steve? Well, it sounded plenty good. The motor in the Houghton car. Here we're looking at Johnny Herrera. He's the leader. That's coming on the John Houghton Shell onboard camera. Oh, look at this. It's almost as good as that video game. Yeah. Shows how close they do run the wall. Hod not real comfortable with his car. You can see how much lower he's getting in the corner than Herrera. Johnny very comfortable with that car to run it in the, on the top like that. Here's Sammy and Joey Saldana. Saldana just eking out there. The 17 car is Joey from North Dakota. Not North. Actually, Brownsburg, Indiana. Yep. Steve just I'm thinking of a lot of shots. Yeah, that's why he's yes, uh, 
Saldana is one of those guys that he ran a lot of laps here through the years and usually goes around here pretty good and it's showing right now. But Sammy had a run on him, but uh, he's backing up a little bit from him right now. Sammy, Sammy's car is loose because he's got the wing back really far also. Well, if you were here last night and thought maybe it was a fluke that Johnny Herrera ran like he did in the eight preliminary, uh-uh. Look at the man from Tempe, Arizona. That number 20 car is just about perfect. And a former Kings Royal winner. Yep. In fact, the first time we did the Kings Royal Live on TNN, it was that's where he got the nickname Hollywood for winning that 50 grand on TNN. So, the Channel Lock Dash number two is in the books, and a good one it was. That leaves, of course, the B feature, which sometimes can be the most exciting event of the whole night based on pure excitement, of course, the A feature. So there you see it. Herrera, Hotchell, Saldana, Swindell, Jacob, Schatz, Pittman, McMahon. That'll set up the first four rows of the A feature. Yep, not B-Main B -main you were speaking of, Steve. There's a lot of heavy hitters, a lot of good race cars Maybe. in that thing tonight. I tell you, with Herrera and Hottenshell side by side at the front of the A feature, we're going to renew the battle we ended with last night. Yep, absolutely. And don't forget, we're going to be here tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, 8 Central, with one of the greatest races in all of sprint car competition, and that is the Kings Royal with $50,000 to win, just part of the $209,000 purse posted for this weekend. Bobby Gerald. Johnny Herrera just jumping out, the former Kings Royal winner. Going to flash that Hollywood Herrera smile here for us at the Eldora Speedway. And uh, Johnny Herrera, we've been talking about it. I don't know what you guys have stumbled onto here in the last couple of weeks, man, but you have been fast. You're on a rail right there. What'd you guys find? Uh, nothing, really. We're just, uh, you know, last night we had a good night. We just try to pick up where we left off last night, made a few changes to the race car, you know, making up for the racetrack a little different than last night, and uh, things are working awesome. How close to the fence are you? Pretty close. Yeah, not, not much room for uh, error. I don't, think you can, uh, I don't think you get a penny in between there at times. All right, Johnny Herrera, he's going to be fun to watch in tonight's feature event. Setting the pace. And he is flashing that Hollywood smile. Who could blame him? You can't start. Well, actually, a lot of guys would prefer to start outside the front row, but he's not complaining. Okay, Brad, dig into your mailbag and all those emails you've gotten over the past few weeks. You've got one picked out that uh, has to do with tires. All right there. What does a set of tires for the World of Outlaws cost? From Dave Wilmore. The right rear is around $200, left rear about $180, and the fronts are about $150. And they'll go through probably three right rears and a couple left rears a night. So you can do the math on that. It gets pretty expensive with the tire bill by the, the end of the season running 100 races. And that's just an average track. If you have a really abrasive track, you just put you in a poorhouse. Okay, we'll be back to Earl's Place for the B feature right after a quick break to pay the bill. Balance. From a fan standpoint, I think it's going to be great because a lot of guys are driving very, very hard to get up in the, on those front uh, positions for, on the starting grid because if you look in the past, uh, most race outlaw races are won from the first three rows, and uh, everyone here knows it. So if you're starting 10th in a dash, you're going to have to really get motivated to get up to the front quick. Well, one guy who never seems to be bothered by any of that. He's just a free spirit. He goes out, he does whatever he feels like that night. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. He's driving the number 12 Apple car. Bobby Gerald, what about Tyler Walker? Well, Tyler Walker has a long way to go here in tonight's B-Main event, and we'll see if Tyler can uh, make his way up through there. Stuck my head in the cockpit real quick and asked him how things were going. He said, it's just been up and down in this car. Some nights they're great, some nights they're not so great. He's going to try to do everything he can here, starting next to the other V12, Greg Hotton, another heavy hitter in the B-Main. And also is Danny Wood, the prime candidate for the Rookie of the Year. And he does, even though it's got Pepsi on there, that doesn't mean he's got a big dollar sponsorship. That's a very local thing. He's got to watch every dime in his racing. I'm going to be a little more conservative on the motors probably than everybody else is. I'm going to make them last a little longer, you know. And probably won't be quite as fresh in the motor department. But, you know, until we land a big major corporate sponsor or, or some, you know, associate good sponsor, I feel that's what we're going to have to do to take care of the man that's spending the money. He could be your high school math teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Spectacles and all. Okay, as we said, this is the last chance to get to the A, and uh, how many are going from the B to the A? I think, what, four, four? four cars? Four cars. Brian Paulus, remember, he got into the wall and had to make some repairs. He's back. Brooke Tatton will be Ozzy alongside him. Brian Allenberg, Berger, Dean Jacobs, Tim Coon from Pennsylvania, Jason Myers from California runs the support series full-time. Yep, Kevin Huntley, Jag Kemena in row four, Jeff Shepard, Jeff the Jet Shepard. And we got, you'll see the final two rows right there. Here we go, this is the start of the B-Main. Lock up the dog, hold on to the kids. They are all over the place.
place, but mercifully somehow get through. This is Greg Hatton at the V12 car. You're on board with him. That was Tyler Walker, the other 12 in front of him, and Jeff Shepard in front of him, back there backing up. We're looking at third, fourth, and fifth. You see Jacobs, Jason Myers, Brian Ellenberger. Oh, Jacobs gets real side. We just missed a cushion a little bit there. Hopped the back of the car off. Out there, Danny Wood going under Ellenberger. Yeah, the Pepsi car, the 21 machine. That Eldora slide job went in, took the line right, slid up, took it away from him. The mild manner, Danny Wood. That puts him up to fifth, it looks like, Steve. Yeah, he's speaking with the loud pedal of the steering wheel right there. But Brian Paulus continues to lead it. Problems in his hate, handling problems, been up the front end, but he's out there roaring now. And you can bet, coming out of turn two, he'll get a little extra room after what happened in that heat race. That's right, he's gonna make a good deal more money by getting into the A feature if indeed he does than uh, failing to get out of the B. Well, I said he did, but that's coming out of turn two, and he's leaning them up there, using every bit of that racetrack. And that's his mom. What was she saying? What are you think, doing out there? I think she's saying, get that camera out of here. I'm watching my kid. I think that's exactly what she was saying. And her kid is looking really good. Well, I guess he wouldn't have been intimidated by that wall. Did you see that? How close he got. Again, that's where the racetrack's at. Hockey yeah. going under Tyler Walker there, Steve. Yep. The 12 car going under the 12th car. There's another shot of how how close they're coming to that wall, especially out of that turn two. Boy, you're so right about that. It follows. It didn't intimidate him bet. It went right where we've been before. Well, that old saying about falling off the horse, that's the worst exactly thing right. he could do was be intimidated by that wall. He had to get back up there and go for it. That's the Hockman car, the V12 car. Tyler Walker right behind him in the 12th car. Well, the cars of the B features spread out all over this racetrack. Yep, that's Shane Stewart and Kevin Huntley there. Looks like it's back in sixth and seventh spot or seventh and eighth somewhere back there. Well, any time you get into a B feature like this, you've got a tremendous diversity of talent and equipment. So this is pretty typical of a B. Yeah, and these guys are, I mean, all good racers from all over the country. Look at that. Rick Tattle goes around, oh boy. Goes around uh, Paulus and he got hung up behind Ellenberg and about drove him back, but look at this. Uh, he just couldn't, didn't have enough steam to put that slide job and move back up in front of Tattnall. No, he did not. So Brooke Tattnall now leads with nine laps in the books. Paul is having a problem. Very slow and way down. He's, he's, he's done. Something happened. What a shame for him. He was, uh, that looks like all the tires are up. Yep, it sure does. It was great while it lasted. Just something came uncoupled. Starting to struggle there a little bit when Tattnall got around him. You can see it coming off the turn two. He was really slow. Yep, that's brought out a yellow. And remember, yellow laps do not count in sprint car racing. If they did, some of our racers would have three green laps in them. <laughs> so let's show you the pass for the lead here. Watch Brooke Tattnall, the charming guy from Australia. That's the sixth car on the 10th lap. He's right ahead of Brian Paulus. Well, ooh, Brian just about parks it right there. Yeah, when, when Brooks slid up in front of uh, Ellenberger in the 20, the 20 had to check up, and Brian did a great job not getting the back of him. But right there, you could tell he had a problem. The car really slow. So we're looking at Brian Paulus being pushed off of the racetrack. Let's go down to Bobby Gerald. Bob. I'm not sure if we're talking about Brian Paulus here or the number six car out on the racetrack, Brooke Tatnell, as uh, Paulus was having a problem. But Brooke Tatnell, his crew chief, Troy Renfro, missed last week at Fargo. He's back with the team this week, and he had a good excuse because last week his wife giving birth to uh, a couple of twins, and uh, he reports that uh, his wife Tammy and his twins, Sydney, and I have the other name written down here somewhere. There it is. Caitlin are both doing very well, Steve. <laughs> oh, that's special. You know, I talked to Brooke Tatton a little bit about the fans in Australia and the racers in Australia and how they keep track of the competition in the United States. How do they know what we're doing? Today with the internet sites and uh, we've got three websites of our own trying to let the race fans know um, with the World of Outlaws with their website up to date after each race I mean the race fans really stay on top of what we're doing and what the other strains are doing in America and um, it's it's great because we do get a lot of email from the race fans wishing us all the best. The driver of the Casey's General Store number six car and he takes the green flag as we restart on lap nine. Look at Danny Wood who started way in the back of this thing, goes around, looks like Jacob's there for third. 
Shane Stewart. The other junior, Holbrook Carr, Dean Jacobs owned by Junior, and Shane's going to go around Jacobs. And I'll tell you, Tad, though, if he gets to the A, is liable to be a real big factor because he gave the most spots in the A-man last night. Ten spots from 19th to 9th at 25 laps, and tonight it's 30. As you saw there, Jacobs going back around. Shane Checkered flag is out. Tatnall, who wins the B feature here tonight in the Eldora Clash. Jason Myers got up there. Danny Wood, you're right. Man. Good drive for Danny Wood. Way back. And Jacobson fourth, who just got back around Shane Stewart for that transfer spot. So that'll get you pumped up. And if you could come back out of the B and finish and get a 10th or a 12th, that's a good effort. Yeah, top 10 at this place from, the, from that far back is a good run. On this racetrack. Okay, here's the final results. Brooke Tatnell, Jason Myers, Danny Wood, Dean Jacobs. Good for Dean. They're all going to the A. Won't get a great starting place, but at least they'll be part of it. Jane Stewart, unfortunately, will not in the 9-H car. Okay, well, we've just got one race to go, and that's for all the money and all the points on this night, this Saturday night in Rossburg, Ohio. Stay with us. The A feature coming your way. 23280. It's a big time shoot 'em up from the Windy City, Chicago, on the TNN Sofa Cinema with Bill Engvall. Oh man, Jager Springer! No! Eric Roberts is Big Al Capone, and the movie is The Lost Capone. He lost his little brother, Jim. There's not a dry town made in Utah, thanks to me. Now, you want a piece of that? You don't have a spare drink on you, do you? Well, he finds out he almost bumped off his own brother, huh? Is this a true story? The Lost Capone, Tuesday at 8, 7 Central, on the TNN Sofa Cinema. Ah, uh, yeah, we are rocking and rolling at Eldora Speedway on this warm Saturday night. The Penzo World of Outlaws, the Eldora Clash, and only one race remains. The 30-lap A feature. Teams down there busily preparing the cars that came out of the dashes and out of the B-Main. It should be on hand very soon. Let's go down to Dave with a man who's having a good eye, Mike. Well, Steve, Brooke is a little bit concerned about your race car. What do you need to change? Uh, we've got to try and tighten this thing up, so what we're probably going to do is take a bit of stagger out, which is the difference between the right and the left rear, and try and get the car to drive a little straighter, uh, we'll pull the wheel under. We've just really got to get our car a lot tighter than what we were then. We're okay if we're starting up front, but we're going to have to uh, do some passing tonight. What happened in your heat race? Uh, we're still a little stumped on that, but... Uh, Everything seemed to be running okay. We had Earl Gurdy and Sammy Swindell over helping us tune it before the heat, and we've either broken a fuel pump, a fuel pump, or a ignition box. Well, he's got it together. Now we'll just have to see what he can do in the final race tonight, Steve. Uh, thanks so much. Give him our best as well. He works very, very hard and has put his whole life on the line to run with the Penzo world of outlaws. You know, Jack Howdenshall has always fascinated me. He's very slight of stature, but so brave in the cockpit of an outlaw car. Here's the Argebrot files on Jack. Jack, you've always run really well at Eldora. Why is that? Well, Eldora, I've always liked to, you know, the racetrack's real wide there, and, uh, you know, there's always... Uh, two or three or four grooves uh, to, you know, to get around somebody. If you're faster than them, you can usually get around them. And, and uh, you know, the high bank track holds you real good. So, uh, you know, I just always liked uh, big high-speed racetracks like Eldor. A lot of people are intimidated by that type of track, but it doesn't seem to bother you. Is it a matter of just psychologically forgetting about that? Yeah, it really is. Uh, you know, the, the high banks are running up uh, close to the wall, uh, you know, uh, can... Uh, make you wonder sometime but uh, you know I've always felt real comfortable there and uh, uh, you know you got to get your car feeling good there to to run good and if you can do that uh, you know that's half the battle you know throughout your career the nickname the wild child you've always been an exciting aggressive racer is it a matter of being fearless do you have to put that completely out of your mind well yeah you just go out there and uh, you know the guys you run against uh, you know that run uh, you know they run real hard so uh, you know, you, you, you got to get out there and uh, you got to run as, just as hard as you can and, uh, you know, forget, forget about a, a lot of things. Uh, you know, you just got to concentrate on racing real hard. Do you consider Eldora your home track? I mean, being from Ohio, and is it kind of special to be in front of your home people? Yeah, it really is. I've always enjoyed uh, racing at Eldora. And, uh, you know, I started out racing at McCutcheonsville and Finley and uh, uh, Wayne County and all the small tracks around Ohio. and. And, uh, you know, when I went to Eldora, i uh, never seen nothing like that. And, 
you know, I was, I was, uh, I was pretty excited about racing on that track. And when I did, I felt real comfortable in it and uh, always liked running there. You know, you, we're entering a period where there's a lot of money at stake and a lot of, uh, lot of pressure. Do you ever feel more pressure going into big races? Well, I try not to. Uh, you know, I just uh, I, I try and take them races like they pay a thousand to win sometimes. So I try not to worry about the big money payoff. Uh, you know, so you just run as hard as you usually do. And uh, you know, it's uh, you know it's different for everybody. The mechanics, uh, you know, there might be a little bit more pressure on them sometime, uh, knowing it's a big money race. But uh, I always just try and take them uh, just like uh, just any other race. Uh, you know, all the World of Outlaw races we run, they all pay good, and uh, they're all good races, and uh, so we prepare the car uh, probably the same as we do for any other race. Jack Hatchell preparing his car. He'll start, I believe, second in the A feature, which is still to come in just a few minutes. You know, Wednesday night, make sure you check out new episodes of 18 Wheels of Justice. What about that truck? Federal agent Lucky Vanas brings in the bad guys with his high-speed, high-tech big rig. Check out 18 Wheels of Justice every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, a part of TNN's Action Wednesday. And speaking of action, gang, we'll be right back. Still building towards the 30-lap A feature here at the Eldora Clash. Oh, they got neon now. I love it. You can't believe it's happening to your baby. I never imagined my child with leukemia. Why me? Why him? That's what each of these parents thought. But cancer happens to other people, not their own kids. But the truth is, this killer doesn't discriminate. It can strike anyone. When they first told me the diagnosis, it was a fear like I've never known before. There is hope, and there is help. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, the children are fighting for their lives, but the only way they can win is with your help. Please call now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope. A $16 monthly donation will go to the immediate treatment of these very sick children. It also provides travel, lodging, and meals so that parents can be with their children during this incredibly difficult time in their lives. Jared has metatastic retinoblastoma. I have a disease called osteosarcoma. I have leukemia. No child is turned away for their family's inability to pay. Please call now and become a partner in hope. Just 53 cents a day. The price of a cup of coffee or a newspaper can help these children beat the odds. Or if you prefer, consider a one-time donation of $25, $50, or $100. It's so important that you call now. It will make a difference in the life of a child. Without St. Jude, Amy would not be alive. Help stop the killer of these children by becoming a St. Jude partner in hope. A $16 monthly donation, just 53 cents a day, can do so much for these children and their families. There are no guarantees. We're waiting on a miracle. Please call now. Help these children live. The A feature is still uh, getting ready. They're packing the track a little bit with the push vehicles. Let's go down to Bobby Jarrell. We're down here at the number 15 pit of Donnie Shots, and that's where there's a guest mechanic working on the car tonight. He snuck all the way over to the left front on us just to make it hard to get to him. But here he is, Frankie Kerr, recently retired from racing. What was that all about? Frankie, you're only 39 years old. Uh, I just uh, wasn't having that much fun at the time and uh, thought it would be best to uh, maybe do something else. How are you helping Donnie here tonight? What do you tell him about this track that you have so many laps on? Well, he, you know, he's not very comfortable here, and uh, we're just trying to get the car better to suit him. And uh, he needed some advice, and uh, been helping Jack a little bit and helping Donnie. So thank God they parked next to each other, and uh, we're just trying to give him the best advice we can. All right, Frankie Kerr, it's good to see him in the pits. We don't want to see him go away, Dave Argo, right? Well, we're with Sammy Swindell, busy with spark plugs and all that. Sammy, looks like you're very close on the setup. Any last uh, last minute changes? Yeah, we made a few changes, just uh, try to make the car a little better. We've been off just a little bit, but uh, we'll keep the channel lock car right up front. And, you know, if we get everything just right, we'll pull off a win. Well, he's starting in the second row. He's going to be a threat. Steve? Boy, he certainly will be. He was a big threat last night as well. Okay, fans, give me an E. Give me an L. Give me a D. Give me no. Give me an R. Give me an A. Wake up. We're coming back with the A feature. Who's going to win it? Will it be one up the pole by Herrera? How Charles Wendell? You'll know soon. Good pass. 
At long last, it's time for the Big A on the Big E. The A main coming your way, 30 laps as they're forming up right now for the traditional four breast salute to the crowd. I'm Steve Evans with Brad Doty in the booth, Dave Argabright, Bobby Gerald down in the pits. And we're going to have a look at the grid just as soon as they get formed up here. Oh, I love this. I always brings a little sweat to my brow and a little, uh, little tingle to me, doesn't it, Brad? I'll tell you, folks, if you've never seen the World of Outlaws live and you go and they form up like this, you can feel the electricity in the air from the crowd. and. And it's just amazing how, how they respect and appreciate these drivers. Standing behind me is your sister, Amy, our stage manager, and she's got goosebumps all over her arms. <laughs> It'll do that to you. Let's go on board with Hodnett, Greg Hodnett, who took a provisional and will start dead last in what is now a 25-car field. And up front, we've got Joey Saldana. They're close to the front. This is Johnny Herrera, who's on the pole in the 20 car. And next to him in the front row, we have got the front row covered, guys. Yep, front row and the back row. You so got it, Jack Outchill, the number 22 car. This is going to be great. This is going to be good. This is what we all came for. The interaction between the drivers and the fans. Nothing in motorsports quite has this feeling to it. You know, in that interview with Jack Hodgenshield, you know, that money means less to this guy than probably anybody I know. And he really doesn't get rattled by what it pays. He just races as hard as he can. Well, here's the grid. Johnny Herrera, as we said, up front. Tempe, Arizona, number 20 car. Jack Houghton, child, 22 car from Ohio. Jerry Saldana, number 17. Slamming Sammy's one double was roundly booed by the crowd, but that's that's kind of traditional here at Eldora. He's maybe one too much in the number one channel on car. Then you got Kenny Jacobs, who could really do well in that 6K, or Donnie Johns. Yep. Again, Jacobs, a lot of laps here, but he's a long way back with these guys, uh, the 30 lapper. Darren Pittman, Paul McMahon in the U2, Stevie Smith, 19 car. Steve Kins will be interesting to see, see how far up the King of Outlaws can come yep. from row number five, actually the 10th spot on the grid. Dale Blaine behind him there we saw too. He's another one who could come up from the back. Danny Lasowski would have liked to have a better starting position for the 83 car. Yeah. And as we look at the rest of the field, Craig Delansky had such Boy. a great run at Fargo last week and starting way back. And Danny Wood. What a job he's done coming from the back. And Mark Kinzer was right in front of them, too, long way back. Of course, Greg Hodden, they're our provisional starter. That's right. We got to get it down to Bobby Gerald. Mark Kinzer starting 22nd, guys. We just spoke with Carl Kinzer. He is gambling with a soft compound, Goodyear tire. He has the 20 compound. They're the only car in the field that has that soft of a compound. They could be fast at the beginning, Dave Argabright. Well, Steve Kinzer had an engine problem earlier, but they did not make the change. We're blowing a little bit of oil through the breather cap, but they replaced it. They think they got it set. We'll see. We were talking about Mark Kinzer, the 5M car. They won last Monday night in Wisconsin without Carl on the property, and the crew chiefs were very, very proud of that, the guys that work on that car. Carl's here tonight. You can bet on that. Oh, it's the wing sweep through the lens at the start of the A-Main here at Eldora, the world's fastest half mile. Everybody, Morag, as he gets through turns one and two, headed down into three, coming out of four of the leaders, Dean Jacobs. Hot Jim out front. Jack Houghton-Child out in front. Hot child just killing him here. Boy, Johnny Herrera in the black car. Here's Sammy challenging Herrera. Sammy trying to run the middle of the racetrack. That's where he was so dominant early last night. But then the feature, they missed a little bit of what was set up and ended up third. They wanted to track early, and what you can see right now, just a couple laps, it's dried off again, and uh, boy, Mark, with that 20, they were hoping to make a lot of... Oh, oh and into the wall goes the 11 car, Steve Kenzer, Andy Hilleberg almost gets caught up in it. You can see how much dirt Greg Hodden was eating at the back of this field. That was oh, close to bringing out a yellow. Back, back straight away, we got a crash. Uh, this is going to bring out a red flag. That looks like uh, the 12 of... Uh, Tyler Walker, I believe. I bet believe it is, yeah. It's you know, We have two 12s in the field, one... That's the... I can't tell. It's not... Uh, guess at it. And it's hot at the V12 that started last. It took the provisional. So the red flag is out for the guys who uh, faltered in their qualifying and heat races and they're starting at the back. This is good news. It bunches up the field. We will be right back for the restart there. You can see the king in big trouble. They played in half-empty stadiums. Billie Jean Cheryl King. Milner. So we could get standing ovations. Flojo. Martina Navratilova. They endured catcalls. So we could be we superstars. We could be superstars. They were called different. Wilma Rudolph. So this, this would be normal. Chris Everett. Daddy Stokes. They created a world where we could jump, shoot, sing, shine, try. Don't blow Don't it. Don't blow it. Don't blow it. 
the biggest news in motor oil since motor oil. Let me show you something that really surprised me. Look what happened to the other leading motor oils after a 128-hour test designed to simulate severe driving conditions. But this is newly formulated Penn's oil with pure base after the same test. I'm no mechanic, but I know which one I'd rather put in my car. These? I don't even know what I'd do with these. Hmm. Ah. For protection so strong you can see the difference, get newly formulated Penn's oil with pure base. The same passion and dedication that drive our racing programs also drive the way we create parts for high-performance vehicles and high-performing vehicles like yours. Mopar, great parts for great vehicles on the track and in your driveway. That's the Mopar difference. In a world where a collect call can cost you dearly, two warriors show the way. 1-800-CALL-ATT presents Dialing Dragons. The rates are low, but the action is sky high with... 1-800-CALL-ATT. Very clever, but perhaps you forgot. Flight of the Mongoose. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll dial. 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. You have saved big bucks, my son. The student has become the teacher. 1-800-CALL-ATT. At phones everywhere. Welcome back to the A main. The Greg Honda car has been cleared. We're just about set for a restart. Let's show you some replays that happened in just two laps of racing. Watch Steve Kenzer, Andy Hillenberg. Hillenberg kind of runs up along the right-hand side of Kenzer, almost steps Kenzer into the wall, and both of them recover and stay out of the racetrack. Well, you don't see that very often. Guy running over the out outside of a guy from the outside like that. Here's from the speedy cam. Boy, Steve, lucky it didn't. Pull the front end, and oh, there's Hodnett. Hodnett up, all but upside down right there. Listen. Oh, Bobby Gerald. Well, Craig Hodnett, that sounded horrible. Are you all right? Yeah, everything's all right. We're just uh, trying to get to work in America. Machine up front. Got a little too uh, anxious, I guess. All right, glad to see you're all right. Sorry to see you're out of it. Okay, the pace car is off the racetrack. We restart the A feature with 28 laps remaining. Jock Hatchild out front, followed by Johnny Herrera, Sammy Swindell, Kenny Jacobs, Darren Pittman. That's the top five. We'll be on board with Johnny Herrera on the restart, looking right at the rear tank of a wild child. Herrera makes a move to the inside. Where's Hod? Where's Hod? Oh, man. And here comes Sammy. The number one channel lock car in third. Kenny Jacobs wants to be a part of this quartet. Going into one. Herrera put a slider on him, and Hot tried to turn and get back under him and just couldn't do it. Herrera definitely dominant right now. Oh, we got a car. Kenny Jacobs. Oh. oh no, it was Brooke Tatton on Craig Delansky. Oh, that was just nasty. That's Delansky you're looking at there, the seven car. Upside down. Crews immediately in action. The yeah, that was Brooke Tatton sitting in, in turn one. I believe that's... Dean Jacobs, I believe, backed up against the wall up there. So this will bring out the red. Field will be stopped. And as soon as we have any accurate information from the scene, we'll let you know those conditions with these drivers. If you're a regular watcher of our Pennzoil World of Outlaws on TNN, you know how durable and safe these machines are. It's still racing. It's still dangerous. Uh, no one's saying it's not. But these guys have really perfected these cars to be just about bulletproof. There's oh, that's good. Man, that's great to see. I'll tell you, when a guy, when you're stopped on the racetrack and you get hit like that, that is when the most injuries to a driver happens. The, these cars can flip and crash and go clear out of the ballpark and the guy walk away. And so that wasn't so bad. But when they're stopped in the middle of the racetrack and get hit at those speeds, that's generally when a driver, it's good to see Brooke. The crowd is concerned as uh, we are. And this is Delansky coming out of his car. Okay, we'll be back to Eldora to give you more information on the condition of Craig Delansky right up to these words. When you're a big time racer, it's just fame, fortune, and beautiful women. <laughs> a pretty cool package. 
just like a new Luxair air conditioning system for your home with high efficiency performance to slash your operating costs up to 40% plus complete reliability no matter how hot it gets outside. Okay, it's not fame, fortune, and beautiful women, but it is pretty cool, huh? Find your Luxair dealer fast at 1-800-L-U-X-A-I-R-E. 1-800-LUXAIR. If you're calling your village, collect calls with 1-800-CALL-ATD can save you big bucks. It's the same low rate every minute, every way. 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. You have saved big bucks, my son. Shoulder pads, knee pads. <gasps> now there's a new pad to keep you in the game. Boom! Tough actin' to actin' sports wipes. Get to those hard-to-reach places with the only leading brand that's so tough it prevents athlete's foot. Wipe out athlete's foot. New Tenactin sports wipes. TNN Action Wednesdays. One hot night. Wednesday on 18 Wheels of Justice. You tight with speed freaks yet? Frat boys, drugs, and cash. It adds up to danger. I have what you want. Will Lucky make it? You're under arrest. Waylon Jennings guest stars. 18 Wheels of Justice. Wednesday at 9 Eastern on TNN Action Wednesdays. One hot night. Back at Eldora Speedway, the news is really pretty good. We had a serious accident. Brooke Tatnell, Craig Delansky got together. Tatnell says he's okay. He's going to get a ride to the hospital to make sure. And also, Craig Delansky had some leg pain. They don't know how serious that is, so he also will be transported. But both drivers are basically okay. And here's what happened, Brad Doty. Okay, that's Brooke Tatnell upside down. And Delansky with no place to go. Clips him, and you see what happens. At these speeds, right there, he's upside down. Boom, and Delansky, no place to go. You know, when, when we saw uh, um, the V12 car get involved, you know, some guys say, well, I'd have done this, I'd have done that. You heard on that in-car camera with Greg Hodden when he climbed up over that car, he barely had time to breathe the throttle. The same thing there with Delansky. At these speeds, you're so committed when something's blocking the track like that, you cannot avoid it. And Delansky was really getting thrashed around inside of his car. Let's go down to Bobby Gerald. And here is the leader of the race, Johnny Herrera, sitting in his cockpit waiting patiently for the restart. Johnny, what's going through your mind right now while you wait? Well, just uh, thinking, see if we can make sure we can put uh, 26 more laps together here and uh, not make no mistakes and just uh, see if we can get the job done. You worried about anybody behind you? Well, you know, Hod got the jump there on the start there, and we got around in there on that last restart. Uh, you know, there's some tough guys back there. You know, if uh, one mistake, I make one mistake or get caught up in lap cards for one lap, uh, you could go from first to third in about one, in one corner. So just got to keep our nose clean and see if we can get the job done. Well, Dave Argabright, we've seen Johnny Herrera do it here with a wing that uh, wasn't perfect. Tonight, he's got his whole car under him. Well, Jack Haudenchild has that game face on. Jack, he was very strong on that restart. Can you get back past him? Yeah, it's going to be tough to get back around, but, uh, you know, it's early in the race yet, so we're just going to see how the car feels, and hopefully we'll get back around him later on here in the race. They were working with your tires a little bit, cutting them to, to for a little more traction. Are you satisfied with your setup? Yeah, I think we should be pretty close now. This red probably helped us a little bit. I think we needed it. He's very confident, Steve, and he's sitting in the catbird seat right behind the leader. Boy, he sure is. This restart's going to be unbelievable. Bobby Gerald again. Well, if there's one guy that's charging right now, it's Andy Hillenberg. He's already flown past, I believe, eight cars, Andy. You're working good. How far up do you think you can get? I don't know. Just uh, see how black the track gets. We should get better as time goes on. All right, Andy Hillenberg ready to go down here. They're just about to push him for the restart. Yeah, you're right. Hillenberg has gone from 18th to 10th in just four laps. 26 remain, and we'll have those for you when we come back live on TNN Sports to Eldora for the Eldora Clash. Stay with us, everybody. Could be interesting. When you're a big-time racer, it's just fame, fortune, and beautiful women. <laughs> a pretty cool package. Just like a new Luxair air conditioning system for your home with high efficiency performance to slash your operating costs up to 40%, plus complete reliability, no matter how hot it gets outside. Okay, it's not fame, fortune, and beautiful women, but it is pretty cool, huh? Find your Luxair dealer fast at 1-800-L-U-X-A-I-R-E. 1-800-LUXAIR.
Great parts for these vehicles and yours. That's the Mopar difference. The biggest news in motor oil since motor oil. Let me show you something that really surprised me. Look what happened to the other leading motor oils after a 128 hour test designed to simulate severe driving conditions. But this is newly formulated Penn's oil with pure base after the same test. I'm no mechanic, but I know which one I'd rather put in my car. These, I don't even know what I'd do with these. Hmm. Ah. For protection so strong you can see the difference, get newly formulated Penn's oil with pure base. Hi, Tom Bodette. When did you see the light? On our mother-daughter bonding trip. We thought, hey, Motel 6, great rooms, great price, and we can spend more quality time together. Right, sweetie? Pumpkin? Aw. Call us and see the light for yourself. Boom! Stop dead in his track. That's how fast, tough-acting, tenactin' pump spray works. It stops the itching and burning of athlete's foot dead. The only leading brand so tough, it prevents athlete's foot. Tackle athlete's foot symptoms in seconds with tough-acting, tenactin'. We're back at Eldora Speedway for the Eldora Clash. There are four laps down in the A feature. We're about to get it restarted. Let us show you the top ten as it stands right now. There you see it with Andy Hillebrew wrapping it up. On top is Johnny Herrera, Jack Houghton, Jill, Sammy Swindell. Just moments before they pushed off, our pit guys had a chance to talk to some of these drivers and get their feelings for the restart. Well, if there's any driver that knows Eldora Speedway, it's Kenny Jacobs currently running fourth. Kenny, what do you think of your chances here to sneak up for a win? Uh, I think the race car is real good right now, and um, we're set up basically for the second half, and we got a really good start at the beginning, so I think we have a real fast race car. Dave Argabright, we may be looking out for the 6K. Well, Darren Pittman riding six. What do you have for him, Darren? Uh, we hope a little bit. You know, we got up to fourth there on the start and then backed up a few spots. So uh, we're going to see if we can't get this J&J &J, uh, Shaver Engines car up there a few more spots and uh, try to get everybody something to talk about for tomorrow night. He's liking Eldora better every time he gets here. And, of course, tomorrow night is the King's Royal 50,000 to win. A huge purse. You'll see it all right here on 10 and 9 Eastern, 9 Pacific, 8 Central. Pace car is still on the track, Brad Doty, and it's an after incidents like this, you start to worry about debris that's pushed down in the dirt and gets into a tire, as what happened uh, last Saturday night in Fargo. Yeah, you just hope that the guys down there did a good job, cleaned all that up, and, and uh, these tires have gotten so lightweight, they're so thin, it doesn't take much to puncture them. Out on board with Joey Saldana. He is currently running. Fifth, Saldana there's... is fifth. Here's a uh, Houghton Child who is second. You're looking right at the tail tank of Johnny Herrera and Dale Blaney. As you may know, Dale Blaney's car, 93 car, is owned by his brother Dave, who is a Winston Cup driver, but they get along great. I talk to him quite a bit, and I mean, he's always helped talk to him on the phone. He's always been uh, as good a setup guy as a driver could be. I mean, every time he's been at the racetrack seems like I've gone better he knows what I need to go faster on the racetrack and uh, anytime I can talk to him I'll talk to him three four times a day if that's what it takes all right here we go 26 laps left Johnny Herrera in that 20 car just blazes away that's out Joe behind him in the black 22 with the green accents on the wing oh, and how about this look at this what a great race that's Stevie Smith on the outside the 19 car Darren Pittman in the blue three car that's for eighth and ninth back in there. Boy, they just, when this restart, it bunched them all up. Everybody's searching around three wide there again, trying to find a, a line to get a hold of that racetrack. Oh, yeah. And a great start also by uh, the 11 car, Jim Schaefer, the vibrant car, 11H. Oh, see the Amico car, Blaney slide right up front of Hillenburg again, and Hillenburg and Kins are close to making contact again. Sammy Swindell now into second, chasing down Johnny Herrera, and he is catching him for sure. Both cars are Goodyear shod. On board, Joey Saldana. Saldana currently riding in the fourth place with Jack Houghton Child in front of him. Look at this, Sammy going to the inside of Herrera. Just took that line away, that slide job. Boy, now it was dominant. Sammy wasn't as close to him as I thought he should have been to make that. Oh, we got a yellow here. Yep, we do, and that's good news. Dean Jacobs. For Johnny Herrera and some of the guys behind him. Yep, so now uh, Herrera will get the lead back. Well, it's good and bad news. I'd really like to see Sammy get up in traffic where they could get him trapped. On board Herrera again, yeah, a sight should. he didn't want to see. Well, it should put him back because they didn't get it, I don't think, got a complete lap when Sammy got by him. Johnny might have seen the yellow, though, because, he, you know, it looked like he might have slowed up a little bit when Sammy went by there, but... Uh, 
I was kind of surprised because Sammy wasn't that close to him and just drove right through the middle and made the car stick. Dave Algebrad? Well, this yellow doesn't do Sammy any favors, not just because it cost him the spot. He's running a very hard compound tire. He needs to run many green laps to get heat in that tire, so it really begins working well. If we get a long stretch of green laps, guys, that blue car is going to be a factor. Well, Goodyear brought over 400 tires to this one race, and many of them are their brand new, formerly a developmental tire that they tested and control testing at Terre Haute yeah. and some other tracks, and that's what some of these guys are running. I've talked to a lot of these guys, and, and there are so many new tires, they can't even keep up on them as far as with the teams. They don't even know, uh, you know, what, there's a, there's a tire being changed right there, but you know, they can't even keep up with all these new compounds because Goodyear's working so hard to try to come up with something, but I don't know why they're uh, changing that tire. It's obviously not flat. Hard to say. But one thing we know for sure, the racers should have a pretty good book on Eldora. This is the third time this year they've been here for multiple meetings. Well, Hargerbright commenting on Sammy there. If he thinks he's going to be fast late in the race, these guys could be in trouble because he looks pretty fast right now. Yep. They have put Johnny Herrera back up in front. You were absolutely right, Brad. It wasn't scored as a lap. But look at Sammy just lurking. Yeah, you're right. Maybe a Nicky Valve still. That was that didn't look like. There's the lurker I'm talking about, that blue channel lock car, number one. On board, Joey Salvana. He's looking up at Jack Houghton, Child's 22 car. Off in front, you see Sammy running second, Johnny Herrera in the third spot. Herrera, who's won here before, he's won the Kings Royal. Sammy's starting to get the heat in that tire, as Dave Archibald said. And look at Sam. He is inside, inside, and he has got it. Yep, same thing he did before. And, and this is, again, what Sammy was so dominant last night early in the race, uh, right through the middle of the track. And the track, I think, was a little wetter than he anticipated for the main. Now it's back the way he liked it last night. And again, dominant right through the middle of the racetrack. When you can do that at Eldor, that is showing some dominance and strength. Steve Kenzer, Stevie Smith. Back in ninth spot. Boy, Kinzer and Hilleberg just can't shake each other. No matter where one goes, the other one's right there. Even when they run into each other. There's Danny Osatsky down on the inside. Danny's back in 13th position. But he's made, made a pass there on uh, Steve Smith. We still have 19 laps to go. Wow, Sammy's just checking out right now, folks. He's about a straightaway ahead. Unbelievable. The two old warriors, Sammy Swindell and Steve Kenzer, they're just as good as they ever were. Look how far back his wing is. You can tell by the angle in it. We'll get another shot out there. It's, it's, when, they, when the driver moves this wing back, it also stands it up, puts more angle in it, which gives it more downforce. Joey Saldana there, you can see him running in the middle of the track also. And the wing is cockpit adjustable, just a little hydraulic control. Yep, just the top wing only. The, the nose wing is fixed. And they very seldom change that. Even in the pits, they very seldom change the nose wing angle. We're on lap 13 with Sammy Swindell in control of this race. Here's the fight for second spot between Herrera and Hotchill. Johnny Herrera has not won an A features. It's the very first race of the year. He did win a preliminary at yep. Knoxville a couple weeks ago. You're right, no, no. Hey, feature boy, Sammy's really got that wing back. Sammy is dominant here the way he was in Bristol, the way he was in North Dakota last Saturday. More so even than uh, Fargo. Mark Kenzer really needed some points after falling out of the VA last night and finishing 23rd as boy. 14. Jason and Meyer. Passed by Jason Meyer. Yeah, Meyer makes it look easy. Mark really struggling. Oh, look at that. Like Jim Neer going around him also. Their only hope is for Sammy to make a mistake here at traffic. It's unlikely because he maybe has the best car control of any sprint car driver ever. Oh, look at that. Saldana battling for uh, hot shield there for third place. Yep. Johnny Herrera still runs second in the 20 car. Saldana on Hoosiers. Saldana is the only car in Hoosiers about the last top 10 or 12. So 12 to go. Yeah, right there was uh, Herrera. Herrera, Blaney. hot chill. Yeah. Aldana, they could Look at that. Blaney, Blaney goes by. Look at this. Blaney's coming through the middle as he goes by Saldana. Now he's after hot chill for third. This track has kind of come to Dale Blaney, hasn't it? 
Dale Blaney got his first win. A month or so ago, a huge confidence builder. Well, we talked. To, he, he talked earlier in his, about talking to his brother Dave. Dave was one of the best there ever was at running Eldora and running the wall. I mean, he would have sparks flying off the right rear wheels with Dave Blaney and get around his place and look at that. Dale's car working so well, he can move to the bottom and still drive up on the inside of Hot Shield. Right by Stevie Smith. He may have been on the cell phone to his brother yeah. during that red. Usually his brother Dave was, like I said, running the top, banging the wall. But that car that, it, that Dale Blaney's is working so well right now, when you can, on the tracks this slick, and you can drive off the bottom and pass those guys, that car is hooked up with a lot, very little wheel spin. The 89-inch wheelbase cars with huge wings, 800 horsepower engines. There's nothing like them in all the world of motorsports. It depends on the world of outlaws. And they are slicing and dicing tonight at Eldora. What do you think they're going to do tomorrow night for 50 large? There's Saldana got around Herrera. That's for four. Yeah, Herrera's struggling. He's trying to bottom. He's moving around. That's on board with Herrera right there, Steven. He doesn't like what he sees. Nope. Hot Shield tagging wall up there, as did it look like Joey just a little bit. When you can see this, the shine of this racetrack, when you can see a shine like that off those lights, that's what we call a glazed slick. If Sammy Swindell can hang on about uh, six more laps, he's going to have his fifth A feature win of the year and probably move by Mark Kinzer in points to second. Something he did last Saturday, then gave it back on Monday when he lost a wheel and flipped the car, costing some really important points. Getting ready to lap Mark Kinzer. We saw Sammy getting ready to lap him there. But Steve Kinzer is killing him with consistency. He's in the top five most of the time, in the top ten virtually all of the time. Oh, a little smoke there again. Oh, and he just, just brushes the wall. Got him, he goes got him, after Herrera. But he got a nice bite off that wall. And Steve, he got up there that right rear, tagged the wall, and it shot him off the corner. But Herrera's back on the inside of him as they go down the back straightaway. Steve, that veteran of his, Johnny showed him the inside, and Steve just kind of cut down on him going into three and took the line. Okay, here's Sammy Swindell. He's the man leading this thing. Dale Blaney is in second place, the 93 Amico car. Let's right there is. Oh, man. Is he coming? I'll tell you what. Is Sammy, he coming? Sammy doesn't want to see a yellow right now. I can guarantee you that. Blaney two. does, though. Blaney's got two laps, and he just might. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't we'll know. Say, Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Blaney may have had a set of tires that came to him. Uh, he just slipped up there a little bit, lost a lot of momentum but to give Sammy a chance to get away, get a little breather there. But now if Dale can catch him down the back straightaway and drive through the middle and make it stick, he might make a pass for the lead here. And what I love about the World Battles, there's no mirrors, there's no radio. Sammy doesn't know he's there. Come on! Oh, the boy. The crowd on their feet for Dale Blaney, but it's not going to be quite enough. John gets around Saldana for third, but there's the man of the moment, Sammy Swindell, number one channel lock car. But what about Dale Blaney? What a show. Slim, as he sometimes calls himself, put on former college and even professional basketball player. Just did a brilliant move. And Dave Blaney, I know you're watching this. Man. He better be proud of that brother tonight. We started 12th and put on a good run. Oh, but what does that say for tomorrow night? You don't think these Hoosier fans love that little dust up, do you? That was spectacular. Well, the top two cars on good year. Blaney is on a good year. And these guys will be looking at these tires tonight for tomorrow. All right, here's the top ten. As we go to break, of course, we'll be back to talk to Sammy and the rest. Sammy, Dale, Hotshaw, Saldana, and Kenzer. Man, this place was rocking the last five laps of the eight features. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Whoa. For these vehicles and yours. That's the Mopar difference. Hi, I'm Tony Conda. Our ad agency told me if you want to sell your wraps, Tony, put kids in your commercials. I told them oven roasted deli turkey and guacamole in a spinach tortilla was enough. But I, but what do I know? I'm just a simple sandwich man. How's that, Tony? Simply Blimpy for hand-rolled wraps. 
the biggest news in motor oil since motor oil. Let me show you something that really surprised me. Look what happened to the other leading motor oils after 128 hour test designed to simulate severe driving conditions. But this is newly formulated Pennzoil with pure base after the same test. I'm no mechanic, but I know which one I'd rather put in my car. These, I don't even know what I'd do with these. Hmm. Ah. For protection so strong you can see the difference. Go to Pennzoil.com and see the test results for yourself. You can express your opinion about the environment on your car. Or you can do it with your car. Introducing America's first gasoline electric hybrid, the Insight from Honda most fuel-efficient car in the world. For the first time on television. Who are you? First things first. Order is... Bond. Bond. Can't you just say hello like a normal person? You will die. die, die, die. Got no seven. Ah! Boom! Stop! He has M. In demand. You'll feel nothing at all. Always have an escape plan. Escape. Your time is up. The world is not enough. Welcome out to me. Shake. Not stir. In demand, you rule. J -J James Bond. From the moment they're born, guide dogs are prepared for a very special mission. They're taught to be comfortable in busy conditions, how to tell when it's safe to proceed, how to guide a human companion around hazards and obstacles. Good girl. Good. The skills they learn bring second sight to a blind person, and with it, independence. The freedom to go where they like, when they like, without having to rely on anyone but their trusty guide dog. It gives them the ability to live life to its fullest potential. That's invaluable for them and for all of us who benefit by their work, their talents, and their company. It's a good thing. That's why the law allows guide dogs to go everywhere that's open to the public. To learn more, call the Guide Dog Foundation for the Blind at 1-800-548-4337. 1-800-548-4337. Clear sailing off to your fifth win. Were you aware how, how close Dale Blaney was there at the end? No, I just knew I was getting held up a lot by, by some of them guys that was trying to lap, you know, the, the, the five in. I think he saw me and picked the pace up a little bit, you know, and uh, we just having some trouble getting through. There was a guy on the top, and he was on the bottom, and um, I was having trouble finding the line to get through there. It was just uh, it's one of them deals. We pulled it off with a channel lock car, and it was good enough. You know, we had a car that was going to be good on the long runs. So it just... There, Dan, it did get loose on me some and uh, probably slowed down. We got to work on that. But uh, we tried some stuff early tonight. It worked. And uh, then we waited for the big race to put it back on. Sammy Swindell is going to be tough to beat tomorrow night, Dave Argerbright. Well, this guy here, he thinks he's got something for everybody. I have never seen you so pumped, Slim. Let me tell you, one more lap, could you have gotten him? Uh, I think it needed a half lap, so uh, we was going awful good. After that red, uh, the guys got it going good. We didn't make many changes. I knew I was good there, but... I was a little tight early with water on the track, but uh, we just kept coming in, and Mopar and Maxim, uh, that run really good. How much of a boost is this for tomorrow night, big race? Huge. Well, it's big. I mean, we've run good here all year. Uh, we run fifth and fourth, uh, two laps, or two races earlier, so uh, not very good last night, but uh, I got enough confidence. Boy, confidence not a problem here, guys. No, it certainly isn't, and this crowd is not leaving the racetrack. They're all going into the pits to meet the drivers and get up close. When we come back, we'll tell you who is the Luxair cool move of the race. Stay with us. We're still coming back. Wendy's has a craving for a hot new sound. Enter Wendy's Search for Sizzling Sounds Contest, brought to you by TNN and CMT. All you have to do is write an original song that captures your love for hamburgers, like the ones you get at Wendy's. That classic combo of hot and juicy beef with your... Penzo World of Outlaws competition. You celebrating, Bobby Gerald? Uh, we're down here with uh, Jack Hot and Shield, just reliving it a little bit. This is uh, what the guys do. I, I saw you got the hand gestures going. And what are you telling your crew chief, Ricky Warner, here about your drive tonight? Yeah, I'm just telling him how the car felt, and, and uh, you know, we got tomorrow yet, so hopefully, you know, we're going to try a few different things and get a little better for tomorrow and, and uh, just go from there, really. Dave Argerbright? Well, Danny Wood, what a ride. Started 24th, came in 8th. How'd you do that? I'll tell you what, this Pepsi hopping sack, who's your tired Avenger car, was awesome tonight. I wish we could have started a little closer to the front. We might have had something for them, but coming that deep in the field, we was glad to finish as good as we did. 
it's neat to hear a guy from Oklahoma talk like that here at Eldora Speedway. Back to you guys. I want to know what a hopping sack is. We just talked to uh, Jack Hotchell. He's a three-time winner of the Kings Royal. So is Steve Kinzer. And that is something that Sammy Swindell would like to accomplish tomorrow night. He only has two Kings Royal. And remember, it's for huge money. And it starts at 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. The Kings Royal, one of the, it was really the first big money race in Wing Sprint. And it's also time right now. It gives me great pleasure to recognize the driver earning the Cool Move of the Race Award presented by Luxair, the official heating and air conditioning supplier of the World of Outlaws. You guessed it, Dale Blaney. The Luxair Cool Move of the Race Award is presented during each televised World of Outlaws event to the driver who makes the coolest move, or moves, in Blaney's case, during the hottest part of the race. And he was Mr. Excitement tonight. Man, did he have this crowd on their feet. We still do not have any final update on the two drivers that were transported, but we're told they were both conscious talking, and one of them didn't even want to go. Yeah, they were both setting up in the ambulance, so yep. they looked like they'll be happy. Okay. In fact, they shared the ambulance. Okay, let's look back over a great night of competition with some uh, interesting shots from our talented TNN cameraman. Ah, uh, yeah, Johnny Herrera almost had it all. They get... Experience country.com, your personal source for all things country. From race cars to country stars, connect to country.com. For Brad Doty, Dave Argerbright, Bobby Gerald, I'm Steve Evans. Join us tomorrow night for the Kings Royal Live on TNN Sports. Go get them, Sam.